in your opinion what are the key elements that should be included in an agilist linkedin profile to make it stand out to potential employers or collaborators for sure so when we look at somebody's profile there's almost a snap judgment that is made whether we like it or not and so it's super important to have a good photo of yourself that is clear and uh, professional as well as a banner that is representative of of you there are people who also write about certifications in the name itself so mm-hmm. what do you think that does that help or does that or the uh, recruiter or maybe uh, so understanding uh, from the uh, author who has already i mean done the research is why i am asking you this so what do you think mm-hmm. uh, putting those certifications and uh, the initials of the certifications in the name itself does that add value I think that that's a, a, a personal choice. Um, I have certainly done that in the past. Um, when I'm working with people one-on-one, I tend to recommend if you're very focused on a specific role, for example, you're focused on a scrum master position and you have a CSM and a PSM, sure. If you want to put those in your name so that it's like very obvious because you're in an active job search and you want it to be right there, absolutely are you feeling stuck in your agile job search linkedin might be the key you are missing whether you are struggling with common profile pitfalls wanting to network with industry pros or aiming to become a thought leader wanting to craft a stand out agile profile to attract opportunities leveraging linkedin groups strategies for crafting noticeable personalized connection requests seeking actionable advice on using linkedin learning and showcasing your certifications effectively This episode has it all. Join us on this episode to learn building an optimized LinkedIn agile profile with Autumn Beck. Autumn is the author of the book The Ultimate Guide to Using LinkedIn for Agilist. A agile journey began years ago driven by a passion for learning, adapting and improving. After finding her niche in the agile community, she spent years honing her skills, gathering knowledge and experience. Now, as a successful senior scrum master, Autumn dedicates her time to empowering others. on their own journey on the agile paths so get ready to transform your linkedin presence and land your dream agile job hello autumn welcome to the podcast by agile coaching round table It's a great pleasure having you on our show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it and I'm looking forward to the conversation. Okay. So today we would want to have a conversation with you on your uh book which is like a guide for agilist on LinkedIn, right? So maybe I would like to start with a curious question. what inspired you to write this guide especially for agilists looking to optimize their linkedin profiles yeah absolutely um i i really appreciate the question I, i think like many people i had an experience that was very tough and as a result of that i wanted to make sure that experience was better for other people uh, when i was in the middle of a job search uh, i heavily leaned on linkedin to help me with networking and job searching and throughout that time i built up a bit of a framework to help me repeat those actions week after week while in an active job search and i was getting questions from other people and decided to go ahead and kind of put it in a list format which eventually turned into um the ebook itself um over the course of several months and with years of experience mhm uh Okay, so it's a good to understand that. Uh, obviously, looking at uh, people's journey or maybe looking at uh, what they are going through, that inspired you to write a book. Uh, but can can you share, or maybe you know, would like to share any uh, common challenges that agilists uh, face when optimizing their LinkedIn profiles, and how can they effectively address these challenges? I mean, do you see a pattern over there? Absolutely. Yeah, I think there's some. common pitfalls that people experience with linkedin in particular one being that people have a hard time with focusing in on a specific 
role that they're going after. Um, as an Agilist, especially if you were new to the space, you'll hear things like Scrum Master, Agile Coach, Kanban Practitioner, um, Trainer, all of that. And then so what happens that I see a lot is the, the headlines in particular are not representative of the goal that Agilists are going after. And so if I were a recruiter or a hiring manager and I saw somebody's profile say Scrum Master, Product Owner, Kanban Practitioner, Release Train Engineer, I would pretty quickly realize they don't know what role they're going for or they're, um, they're just too interested in too many things and I have a specific job requisition that I'm trying to fill. Uh, I see that happen a lot, and that's one of the first things I coach people to do is to get very specific about the value you can add and the role that you would like within your headline. Oh, wow. I like uh, the way you uh, put it across. Uh, so uh, maybe this is something I just wanted to understand your perspective on. So just today, uh, I read a post by someone I don't remember who uh, who had written this post because the person was not in my first connection. Uh, mm -hmm. So there was this post saying that, you know what, LinkedIn used to be a job uh, portal uh, platform, job searching platform earlier, but now it has become a more about uh, maybe networking and maybe uh, exchanging ideas or maybe thought process where influencers share their uh, <laughs> profile or maybe share their thoughts and uh, uh, write posts about uh, the knowledge that they have. So what are your thoughts on that? I, I would agree with the sentiment of it for sure. Over, over time, LinkedIn has evolved from a job search platform to a networking platform. Um, like, like many of the work that we've all probably done, um, they've released more features and they've released more ways for its users to uh, benefit from their platform. Like every platform, social platform, the goal is to keep people on it. The longer you're on the platform, you know, the, the more they like that. So I would agree 100% with that. And I think like many social platforms, it's important to remember the goal should not be to open it up and then scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. Um, there's a lot more that you can get out of a platform by uh, creating content, commenting on other people's content, um, using the tools that are available for job search, as well as the learning platform that, that exists. Um, so, yeah, I agree. And I think that there's a lot more now than there was, um, you know, a few years ago. And LinkedIn has also very quickly grown. They're, they're surpassed a billion users at this point. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity. And I feel that is true for any platforms, right? I mean, any social media platforms. For an example, uh, when we talk about, say, uh, Facebook or maybe uh, maybe Instagram or, or Twitter or now X, uh, I mean, it started off as something and now it has uh, taken uh, some something uh, uh, shape or something else. I mean, that is uh, what going to happen uh, when people uh, get evolved with that platform or maybe looking at the uh, interest of uh, maybe the uh, response that uh, the uh, founders or whoever is uh, getting from the uh, audiences or the users, that is going to take a, a shape and form of uh, the demand, right? So as you rightly mentioned, it has evolved a lot. And what I feel is, I mean, instead of maybe boxing it, as a job searching platform or maybe the networking platform, why not uh, make use of both the things, isn't it? I mean, uh, so as uh, we say that, I mean, social media has got its own, uh, both uh, boon and curse to it, right? I mean, it's depend it depends upon how much we use and the way we use, right? So if we just feel that, I mean, LinkedIn, if you're using as a job searching portal and if we don't find enough jobs and we we are like we are getting uh, lost in in this uh, mm. post kind of a thing and we are not maybe learning from it right so uh, what do you think uh, do we have to i mean how do we keep that balance of maybe job searching and also engagement yeah so for the for the balance aspect of it i think there's there's a few things you can do uh, having a plan when you engage with a platform is really um, one of the best things that you can do from my perspective. So 
if you're on an active job search and you're dedicating an hour of your day to um, you know, online activities, then I think it's important to say, well, for 15 minutes, I will spend my time scrolling and learning and get up to speed of you know, what's going on in the industry today and with you know, the companies that I'm following and the people that I'm interested in um, potentially engaging with. And then outside of that, I'm going to implement some practices such as commenting, um, applying for jobs, following up on jobs I've applied for, doing some uh, research, things like that. So I think to have balance, you have to have a plan. Um, I mean, all of us probably are guilty of getting getting on some sort of platform and scrolling for a lot longer than we intended to because we don't open up our phone and then go, hmm, I think I'm going to go to Instagram for 15 minutes. No, we get there and, and it sucks <laughs> us in. And then the next thing you know, we're buying makeup or something like that because that's what they want. Um, <laughs> that's what they want you to do is to engage and, and um, you know, use their platform for their, for their products and marketing and things like that. That's what it's designed for. So having a plan is really important. Yeah. And also, I believe, or maybe I brought up it is uh, when we started using LinkedIn maybe you know, uh, 14, 15 years back. I think if I can recollect it, the only thing uh, that you used to get to know from LinkedIn is like if someone has changed a job, you know, updates saying, okay, mm -hmm. I've, I've, this mm -hmm. person has changed the job. <laughs> or maybe, you know, that, that, was, that was the only thing. But now I think the platform has evolved so much. Obviously, it, it gives you so much of information. Plus, it also gives an opportunity to network well. Plus, it also gives you an opportunity to explore uh, other things apart from, you know, uh, something that you are doing in your day-to-day -day job. But it also gives you an opportunity to network and then explore the other opportunities that, you know, one would be looking out for. So why not use it uh, in the in the right way? I mean, uh, it, it's good that it gives you an opportunity and its platform to uh, understand and know and network in, in, in the right sense. So uh, I think that is how the product or maybe the journey of LinkedIn itself has uh, evolved uh, in terms of how the users have definitely made use of it. Absolutely. There, there are a lot of personas for LinkedIn users. You have active job seekers. You have um, professionals who are simply there to network. You have people who are influencing. Um, you have people who are learning. I have spent a lot of time on LinkedIn learning uh, personally because I really enjoy um, consuming content that helps me stay up to date uh, with what's going on and, and learn from different people. And that's something I'm really grateful for is that I have the ability to learn from experts in their field, from literally, literally any field, <laughs> um, because of that platform. I don't have to go to a, a talk or a, a conference or a, you know, a seminar. I can literally just pull it up, search for what I'm looking for, and then you know, have that on-demand learning. Yes, absolutely. And since since we are onto you know onto the, that platform, how LinkedIn uh, can be used in the better way. Obviously, one of the best features that LinkedIn do has is uh, related to you know groups, you know, uh, and mm -hmm. that again gives an opportunity to network. Maybe you know if if the size, strength of the group is ten thousand, you you can definitely network with those people without you know having a one to one connect. But how do you think you know leveraging this uh, groups that we have in LinkedIn uh, to to reach out to professionals? especially uh, related to the same uh, field or same uh, scope of work that we do. Uh, how do you think that this networking opportunity can be enhanced uh, uh, from individuals? Absolutely. So what, what Groups offers is the ability to aggregate a community within any niche. Uh, and so, as you all know, you have a group for this podcast. What you've got is people who are interested in the topic which means they're already kind of warm, meaning it's not this like cold outreach, this cold engagement. Um, there's a lot of value in that as a, um, as, a, as a business owner, as a podcast hoster. Uh, there's a lot of value in that. From a networking perspective, it is really helpful. I have one group in particular that I'm a part of that is it's ge it's geographically based. So it's you know out of the area that I live in, with people that I do similar work to. So what happens is it makes it to where rather than potentially organically running into somebody out and about, it's this, it's this new virtual like coffee place where people meet up. Um, so 
uh, I don't know if that totally answers the question, but I, I see groups being used in a lot of different ways. Um, I will caution people that sometimes when you join groups, if they're not adding value and all you're seeing is spam to take a class, get out of it. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to stay in that, that group. <laughs> Absolutely, that's so true. So, uh, since uh, we spoke about uh, the groups, right? So maybe now what I would want uh, to do is maybe uh, have a conversation around the individual profiles, right? So, for an example, in your opinion, what are the key elements that should be included in an agilist LinkedIn profile to make it stand out to potential employers or collaborators? For sure. So when we look at somebody's profile, there's almost a snap judgment that is made whether we like it or not. And so it's super important to have a good photo of yourself that is clear and uh, professional, as well as a banner that is representative of, of you. So there's options now. Um, you used to have LinkedIn, you used to have to have LinkedIn premium to change your banner and that's not the case anymore, which is awesome. Um, so, you know, having a banner that is also representative of what you, you know, who you are and what you're about is really great. I provide, you know, services to people who want to have a new banner, have a new profile picture with the solid background uh, pretty regularly. I think I've done like 20 of them in January and um, wow. like most, like most of the time it's people who are in an active job search, who are just needing some help with getting um, people to scroll past that top part to get into the, the meat of their profile. Um, so there's that. Having <clears throat> an about section that really clearly states what you bring to the table if you're in an active job search is super important. And from the perspective of searchability, the skills section is super important. So in the ebook that I have, I've got probably 50 different skills that I recommend you add. And I think a lot of times people find it hard, especially if you have an aged profile, to delete out irrelevant skills. Um, and especially if you have recommendations, or not recommendations, um, oh, what's it, uh, what's it called where people, um, endorsements. Especially if you have endorsements on those skills, uh, it can be hard to get rid of them. But at the end of the day, what's needed is for your profile to rank in searchability. And, so the keywords need to be related to Agile if that's what you're going for. So things like Agile, Lean, Scrum, Kanban, uh, Sprint, Planning, Retrospectives, um, Estimating, User Story Writing, things like that that are going to be found in a job description so that they po so that you populate for the people who are looking for filling a role. Yes, absolutely true. And then uh, uh, also the other uh, part uh, that I uh, see in, in, in terms of uh, how uh, the key elements that we talk about, right, uh, 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 that needs to be put across uh, in an individual's profile is definitely uh, the endorsements, definitely uh, the recommendations, uh, plus also what I believe is uh, the next, uh, maybe in terms of uh, the certifications, right? Now, mm. since now the intention of bringing into that aspect of certifications is, do you think, uh, does it make a difference when an individual puts in, you know, I am certified, so, so even if those are 10 to 20 certifications, does it make <laughs> a difference to that profile? Or if you see a person who has just, you know, added uh, maybe a, a simple line saying that, you know, I'm a scrum master. Uh, if, if you are a recruiter or if you are a person who wants to, you know, make a, you know, a difference or a segregate, do you think that it that makes or that adds a value to uh, when we add certifications to our profile? Absolutely. Um, your profile is, I, I typically tend to recommend whatever you can do to rank higher in a search, you should, so long as it's honest, you know? Um, and then licenses and certifications, you can plug in all of all of those. I personally have in mind um, <clears throat> CSM, PSM, um, ICP, ACC. I, I have the certifications that are relevant to the industry, to my field. Um, and, you know, you can also put those in your 
your headline, you could put them, you could attach them to your name if you're really interested in making sure people understand what you do. Uh, I don't tend to recommend that um, anymore just because it's a little clunky and it, it shows up in search no matter where it's at in your profile. So uh, there's absolutely value in that, <clears throat> especially when you consider that there are many jobs that require those certifications. And so they're going to, you know, they're going to be put as part of the search for the person fulfilling those roles. Wow, that's uh, that's so amazing uh, to understand that at least, uh, I mean, these certifications do add value. And uh, see, when we talk about putting the certifications, right? So there are two places where people generally put uh, about or uh, talk about their certification. So one is uh, actually at the certification section dedicated to it, wherein people write about their certifications, education background, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. There are people who also write about certifications in the name itself. So mm -hmm. what do you think? that Does that help or does that irk the... Uh, recruiter or maybe uh, so understanding uh, from the uh, author who has already I mean done the research is why I'm asking you this so what do you think mm -hmm. uh, putting those certifications and uh, the initials of the certifications in the name itself does that add value I think that that's a, a, a personal choice um, I have certainly done that in the past um, when I'm working with people one-on-one, -on -one, I tend to recommend if you're very focused on a specific role, for example, you're focused on a scrub master position and you have a CSM and a PSM, sure. If you want to put those in your name so that it's like very obvious because you're in an active job search and you want it to be right there, absolutely. I think maximizing, um, maximizing the amount of letters that you can fit into that field isn't always wise because it just gets very bulky. Um, but it, if you're in an active job search and you want it to be very obvious what your credentials are, it's a good choice. If you're not in an active job search and it doesn't really matter if somebody sees that as soon as they open your profile, then I, I don't tend to recommend it. <laughs> Okay, so maybe uh, moving on. So uh, since we talked about the key elements, right? So what I would uh, want to uh, talk about is uh, about the strategies, right? So what strategies mm -hmm. can Agilis employ to craft personalized connection requests that resonate with recipients and lead to a meaningful networking uh, opportunities? Sure. So... I think there's a few things. One is every opportunity you have to connect with somebody should be a personalized request. And in an ideal world, they the personalized request anchors off of some sort of connection that you all have in common. So when I've taken um, classes in the past, I have during that class found those people while I'm in the class on LinkedIn and said, hey, we're both taking you know, the CSM class with trainer so-and-so would love to connect, um, you know, talk soon, something like that. Um, and I'm, you know, we, we know that we're in the same industry, we have the same goals, things like that. Um, and so that helps. Also, there's um, the ability to connect with people to search with four people by um, like university or uh, maybe previous employer. I've done that before as well. well and funny enough, I when I was in an active job search a few years ago, I was doing that. I was trying to connect with people who had also worked at Amazon because there's a very like-mindedness to people who have worked at Amazon. And so I was hopeful that I would connect with people who had also worked at Amazon who were currently enjoying the role of Scrum Master because it, it was, for me, important to talk with somebody that I think that we would have the same lingo and be able to say like, how are you enjoying your role? How are you enjoying your current company? I'm interested in joining that company. Are you happy with it? And I, and I did that. I actually was able to connect with somebody who I ended up interviewing with two years later and I got that job. So wow. it, it, yeah, it was very exciting. So when we got to the interview and 
she showed up, I was like, hello, how are you? We spoke, you know, a while back and I, you know, was able to ask, how's your sister who she also worked with at that same organization. And it helped to have that warm connection. Um, that story I love to tell because it speaks to the value of networking with people that you just do not know. Um, because and especially in the space of Agile, the world is small. Um, there's a lot of people that you're going to come across that other people know them. I'm sure that if we looked at each other's profiles, we would have so many connections in common um, yes. because there's it's a small uh, world of people. Um, so I kind of went a little off track there, but I love that story. I think it's awesome to tell and it really speaks to the value of um, connecting with people based on an anchor point. Yeah, I think that's that's again a good strategy to have in place where to send out a more personalized uh, message in terms of to to make that person aware that who you know who this person I mean whom I'm connecting with right to give a maybe a, a brief background about yourself uh, to to make sure or maybe to make the other person comfortable enough to have you in his or her network. Uh, and definitely it, it makes more sense to uh, to take take up that approach right and since we are talking about the strategy uh, obviously uh, i think the other thing that we would like to uh, understand or maybe check uh, in terms of how uh, maybe an individual as an agilist use uh, linkedin as a platform uh, to 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 understand you know the upcoming trends within the you know within the industry or within the uh, community or maybe you know to understand about any upcoming events or conferences. Uh, would you like to talk about that as well? Sure. So staying up to date with what's going on in the industry is is relatively simple. Find the organizations and the people who are talking about it and follow them, uh, so that it stays in your. <laughs> um, so I I follow organizations um, not just within the, within the agile space, but within technology in general, within entrepreneurship. And so I do that on purpose because I don't want to end up in this agile echo chamber where we're all talking about the same thing or, you know, we're constantly seeing, I, you know, we see the five posts a day, agile is dead. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's important to, to, to diversify your, um, your feed, uh, but you can't, you can curate uh, between companies, hashtags, um, individual people uh, who are talking about what's going on and uh, make sure that your feed is relevant for what you're looking for. Again, I think it always depends on what your goal is on the platform. If it's a job search, um, you know, I would treat it very differently than if you're there to, to network and learn from other people. Yes, absolutely. I agree uh, uh, on that point. And since you talked about a hashtag, maybe uh, I would uh, want you to talk more about it for an example. Or maybe uh, if you can share some insights on how Agilists can use hashtags on LinkedIn to categorize their content, improve their feed, and attract a relevant audience to their profile. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so with the hashtags, when you when you click on a hashtag from your feed, it'll take you to that hashtag, very similar to every other platform. And then you'll see posts that have just that hashtag. Um, I like, you know, it's a great way to sort out when you're looking for something. Uh, one strategy for job seekers that I recommend is to look up hashtag hiring, hashtag whatever the role is, hiring um, product owner, hashtag hiring scrub master. And then if you want to get really jazzy with it, you can add remote to it, or you can add, you know, Dallas or, um, you know, New York or, or wherever it is that you're um, at. So by doing that, it makes sure that those particular keywords are showing up in your feed regularly and you have the ability to um, focus your consumption. So that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, having a plan when you go into the scrolling aspect of LinkedIn is important. And maybe your plan should be, I'm going to check the hashtag hiring, hashtag remote, hashtag scrum master for 10 or 15 minutes, see how many posts I see that pop up, see if there's anything I'm interested in, if it's relevant for me, or if I know somebody who could benefit from it and send it their way. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, I like to follow hashtag Pokemon Go because I am a Pokemon Go fanatic. 
and <laughs> love to see what they're doing. <laughs> Yes, and I think I'll definitely make use of you know a few of these hashtags going forward. I think uh, uh, yes, this definitely uh, uh, makes sense. Uh, obviously, I think more of the algorithms are you know nowadays are uh, based on uh, how we use those uh, hashtags definitely to ensure that uh, it, it it reaches out to the maximum uh, people mm -hmm. around, right? So yes, definitely uh, uh, going forward, I would be making use of those uh, insights and. Uh, now moving on uh, to the next part uh, is uh, how do we think of maybe what advice do you think uh, would you like to share with you know agilists who are looking to build a strong uh, personal brand on LinkedIn and position themselves as you know a thought leaders in agile space? Uh, do you have any you know uh, suggestions for them? Or maybe uh, I mean before you uh, talk about how to build uh, personal branding. Maybe I would also want to uh, understand why is personal branding so important for any individual? Uh, and then maybe you can uh, talk about advice. Sure. Okay. So the first first question then is why is personal branding so important? Um, well, I, I get to be here because you guys noticed me on LinkedIn, right? So yes. because I was showing up, I was commenting on people's things. Um, I commented on something that you had shared and that I think that was where we ended up being connected. Uh, and so it allows it allows people to recognize you um, where you wouldn't otherwise be able to meet them like in the real world. So personal branding for me means showing up regularly, consistently, uh, reliably in building authority in the space. So, so long as you're able to show up every now and again, even, even if you're not going to be like an influencer on LinkedIn, being able to show up and let people know you're here and you're active, you're interested in learning, you're interested in connecting, uh, that that is a, a good enough strategy for the regular LinkedIn um, you know, consumer. So I recommend for people who are not an active job, job search to stay active because what happens is you, you're just, there's there's more awareness of your existence so that when you do need to use the platform to gain employment, it's, it's you've already kind of lubricated the, the social aspect. You're not gonna be just starting off relationships. You're gonna be kind of um, reinvigorating them. Correct. And also I would like to add to this is I mean, uh, if I if we have to think from the say recruiter's perspective, right? So if uh, we were to be the recruiters and if we were to hire say scrum masters, and there are like so many out there uh, scrum masters who are applying for a job. For an example, if there is a job posting and mm -hmm. we do see that within few hours there are like hundreds of an applications uh, that we get, right? So if we have yeah. to think from their perspective. And uh, it serves as a maybe a filtration criteria as well, right? I mean, if, uh, I mean, this is what I have seen uh, with whatever experience I have using LinkedIn is that recruiters definitely go and land to a LinkedIn profile to see what kind of knowledge this person has or what, what has been mm -hmm. the engagement or what kind of post this person writes or engages in. That helps uh, the recruiters also to uh, see okay, this person has got voice. I mean, not like voice, voice, but then uh, <laughs> voice in the sense uh, has an, uh, maybe the opinion or a voice of the expression maybe uh, in terms of knowledge base that the person has. So I think from that perspective also, personal branding is important. And obviously we cannot do personal branding on other social platforms like uh, uh, Facebook or maybe Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. because this is like a professional platform. Uh, we are putting out our work and our thoughts, right? So uh, what do you think? I mean, uh, is the understanding correct uh, on this part? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you make a good point about recruiters going to your page to find out, like, are they actually active and engaged in this community? Um, what, what do they know? What are people saying about them? Um, again, building authority in the space, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be the number one Agile influencer, but building authority in the space uh, is important. Okay, uh, so maybe the uh, last uh, question uh, 
for for today uh, how can agilist effectively utilize the job alert feature on linkedin to streamline their uh, job search process and receive relevant job posting directly to their inbox i mean this is the area i think uh, which is not much explored uh, by mm -hmm. the uh, job seekers so what are your uh, thoughts or maybe tips on this Sure. So before you use the job search feature, I think it's really important to know what you want. Uh, that is actually the first thing I talk with people about whenever I'm supporting them in their career uh, change or you know, job search is what do you want? <laughs> because similar to if your profile says Scrum Master, Agile Coach, Product Owner, Kanban Practitioner, um, you're going to be having trouble have jobs show up that are going to make the most sense to you. So we all know you can have a product owner, a product manager, a product leader, a delivery manager, a lease train engineer. There are probably 50 titles I can think of off the top of my head that are completely different jobs from each other. So first and foremost is to know exactly what it is that you're wanting to populate from that search. Um, once you know that, then you have the ability to use the job search feature to filter down um, either your location or if you're looking for remote, um, if you have certain salary requirements, if you want to work for certain companies or certain size companies, uh, if there are certain benefits that you are non-negotiable on, such as you know, health insurance or, or things like that. Um, so those, those few things, I think, are important to make sure that you understand before you use that feature. I recommend that once you figure that all out and you create your job alerts, have a couple of different ones, um, depending on what your criteria is. Maybe like this is my first tier, maybe this is my second tier. Of course, I want a 100% remote job, but if not, I've also got a search that's for um, on-site in Louisville, Kentucky, or um, another one that's hybrid in Indianapolis or something like that. Um, so those, those are a few things. And then turning on the job alerts and making sure that you receive the notifications is also important. As you mentioned, there's lots of people applying for jobs. And so apply early, apply often, and make sure that you end up at the top of the list and not in that third or fourth hundred wave of applicants. Um, so having the notifications turned on, and I get it, I have every notification turned off from my phone possible because I am too easily distracted. But if it is an important thing in your life right now to apply for jobs, turn on the notifications so that you are showing up at the front of the line um, and improve your chances of uh, actually being viewed. And also, I would never discourage somebody from applying for a job that you're 70% qualified for, regardless of how many hundreds of people applied, because that doesn't necessarily mean that their application was sent. It doesn't mean that they were qualified, uh, even remotely. So I tend to say, ignore however many people applied, focus on your job search, not theirs. Oh, wow. That was a wonderful uh, advice or tips, I would say. And so many of them, right? I mean, uh, right from creating the job alerts to uh, maybe applying uh, fitting into the criteria and i agree to the point i mean we all have done that mistake uh, when we were uh, i mean uh, very young in this field or whatever i mean we used to think that only if all the cri uh, criteria matches matches only then we'll be applying for the job but as you rightly mentioned mm -hmm. i mean with experience we all learn that you I mean, I tell uh, this to people that even if 60, 65 percent of the criteria is uh, matched, then you can go and apply. I mean, it's not you who would be uh, uh, slimming out the chances by filtering out the uh, job based on the criteria. Leave that to the recruiter to do that because any which way they would be doing that out of the bunch of uh, resumes that they will be getting. And uh, yes, so many things that we have learned uh, today. Thank you so much, Autumn, for doing this. We really, really learned a lot. I, and I hope, I mean, uh, job seekers, especially who lose hope or maybe who feel that this is not the platform for them or maybe they are not getting uh, job opportunities. I would highly recommend uh, listening and watching to this podcast uh, for the tips that Autumn has shared. 
and if you uh, want any uh, services on linkedin as autumn mentioned she does uh, provide the uh, services please reach out to her she is linkedin guru and uh, she uh, she also has written a book on it so you can understand the amount of knowledge and research that she uh, she has done on this so please go ahead and uh, send send out a request to her and uh, get your uh, services done thank you so much autumn uh, for joining us today and sharing such wonderful insights thank you so much thank you thank you i appreciate it thank you so much for watching this episode patiently till the end we hope you enjoyed the episode We'll meet you again in the next episode. Till then, if you like a podcast show, then do like, share, subscribe, and let us know your feedback in the comment section. You can also listen to the episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Audible. Thank you.